Welcome back. How's it going guys? Runner Runner Poker here, finally back, ready to get back to the grind. And for this session, we've got an absolutely monstrous session. I ran so good, got so lucky across so many things, just hitting set after set. Really, really crazy running so pure. And it got me thinking while I was trying to figure out what to do for this vlog. I was running so pure, I, all of it, I would even go as far as to say I was running heavenly. And where should we go when we're running heavenly? At Hog Heaven or at the beach. No, it's, it is way too windy out here to go over hands, so gotta find something else to do. Oh, what's that? You guys know what that is? Right there? That's the Daytona Hard Rock Hotel. It's, it's not like, you know, your South Florida Hard Rocks. They don't have the casino in there, but it's still a Hard Rock. You can go check that out. <laughs> I found some refuge under the uh, entry boardwalk here to get down to the beach because the wind isn't nearly as bad underneath it. But we're not going to be here very long. I've only got a pretty quick hand to cover here. We've got ace-queen offsuit in the small blind facing a middle position raise to 15 and a call from the cutoff. This is the only hand that we've played before moving to the main game while we were on the must move. So we bumped the action up to 50. The initial raiser calls and then the cutoff decides that you know, it's time to wake up and move all in. He doesn't have that much left, but I want to read jam here to try to isolate, so I move all in with ace-queen. The initial raiser thinks for a long time before eventually letting it go. So the cutoff turns over ace-nine offsuit for drawing pretty slim. The board runs out clean, and we get a nice margin. Not quite the full double up, but a good margin when we move over into the main game. Let's keep moving strong. Right off the bat, getting moved into the main game, we get involved in a hand against one of our buddies that we actually brought to the room that day. So I just want to preface this hand with saying, yeah, we're friends, but we're here to play the game and uphold the integrity in the game. So we're not afraid to go to war with each other. There's one limp to him. He's on the button, and he raises the action up to $25. Small blind folds. We make the call on the big blind, but the limper folds. So we're going to go heads up, out of position, with 55 in the middle with nines, do a flop that comes jack, eight, five, all spades. We check to the razor, and they down bet to 15. No way we're gonna fold a pair plus flush draw here, so we make the call. Heads up, still out of position to a turn, there comes the four of spades. We've made our flush, but it's only nine high. We check, and our opponent quickly checks back. So, giving us a little bit more confidence here with our flush, we get an eight of diamonds on the river. We bet 50 for value, and our buddy thinks for a little bit, considering his options, and ultimately raises to 125. Now, certainly not feeling super great in this spot. He's going to have all the bigger flushes and some full houses, so not really much to do here other than fold. So we let it go, and on good pot, get shipped toward our friend. Now, just to say, it was a fun session, and he actually ended up finishing up about $600 on the night. So certainly congrats to him. So masks aren't required anymore in Florida, but I still like to wear mine, um, you know, just to keep my face covered, especially when I play poker, I still wear mine because uh, I'm trying to be very conscious of people's space. But it also lets you see that I'm getting some uh, some merch and I got the hat too. So this could be a thing in the future, nothing publicly available right now. But if you guys are interested in maybe getting some of this stuff, leave it in a comment. And if we get enough interest, then I will start a merch line. But for now, just so you can see my familiar face a little bit better. Very comfy, by the way. We've also got a familiar face in this hand. We are in the low jack, facing a button straddle and a limp, looking down at ace queen, a familiar hand. We bump the action up to $50. Now, the button straddler checks his cards quickly and then quickly calls, and the limper lets it go. Heads up out of position now with 110 in the middle to a flop that comes jack 10 deuce with two hearts. Certainly a good spot to see bet here. We've got two overs and a gutter. We bet 75 and our opponent calls very quickly, which not the greatest thing in the world. Certainly gonna need some help, but good thing that poker is purely a game of skill as we skillfully turn the king giving us Broadway. We got the current nuts, even better. We bet 150 for value and our opponent just snap jams into us as if things couldn't get any better already. We snap call back and announce we've got the current nuts. Our opponent says we've got the nuts for now 
and shows us king 10 for two pairs. So please, one time, not a king, not a 10 dealer for the vlog. And we get a clean six on the river, keeping our nuts on top. Our opponent covers us, so we're going to get a full double up here. Let's go ace-queen. The clouds are getting a little gray. It looks like it's going to rain, so we're going to have to improvise as to what we do and where we go. But we can certainly cover a hand here in my car while we figure it out. We've got pocket eights in the big blind facing a button straddle, and the small blind has limped. Now, as played, I just limp behind, which in hindsight, I don't like at all. Should definitely be an open, especially considering the player to my left folded out of turn. At the time, my thought process kind of was that the table, aside from the player to my right, has been playing pretty passively, and I don't think that there's ever going to be a raise on this table that I don't feel comfortable calling with eight. So I limp behind, kind of just looking for a set mine. There's two other players to limp after me, and the button checks the option. So we're going five ways, second to go, 50 in the middle with a pair and a dream. And as if we weren't running good enough already, the flop comes a magical queen, eight, six. We've got the second nuts. Now, when the small blind checks, this was a limp pot, so I feel comfortable taking control of the action and betting 35 into the field. The cutoff thinks for about a full minute before eventually calling, and then the light shines down upon us once again as the button straddler just rips his stack into the middle for about 175 total. Small blind lets it go, and I think there is some merit to just calling here to try to keep the cutoff in with a wider range of hands. However, the cutoff had a decent stack in front of them, and I really wanted to try to get the money in as fast as possible, so I raised to another 450 on top. Cutoff lets it go really quickly, and the button reluctantly shows us 8-6 for flop bottom two, drawing extremely thin to runner-runner quads. Now, to put it fairly, that doesn't happen that often. We get another pot pushed towards us, running absolutely heavenly this session. After some driving and some careful consideration on where to go and what to do, I thought it'd be only be fitting to bring you guys to the Daytona Speedway, home of the Daytona 500, and actually the old location for where the Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club used to be. It has now been relocated to where it is today. However, this is still a massive, massive speedway. Let's get back into the action. After replying to a comment explaining how I had to emotionally detach myself from King Queen Offsuit as it's kind of one of the more marginal broadways, Let's play a big hand with King Queen Offsuit. We've got King Queen Offsuit with a loose open under the gun to $25. Well, I'm, I'm only half kidding. We're actually only playing five handed as there were some people away from the table at this point. So yes, I'm under the gun, but I'm actually in the hijack. So this open is completely fine. Only the blinds come along for the ride. So we're gonna go three ways in position to a flop. It comes pretty good for us, luckily. It's King 8-6 top pair let's go pretty good board for us but the small blind thinks that it's actually a better board for them and leads into the field for sixty dollars big blind calls very quickly and in this spot i think you could raise here but being multi-way in position closing the action i proceed with just a call still three ways still in position still with top pair to a turn that comes the jack of diamonds now this may not be the best card as some donks here in daytona could be like King Jack and Jack sometimes, and that's just how it is. When the small blind checks, I'm loving to see that. Definitely think we're ahead of them. Now, unfortunately, this puts us in a tricky spot as it opens the door for the big blind to start betting, and they bet $150. Now, against this player, I've got some history, and I'm not gonna fold to them for even my entire stack. It's one of those situations. The small blind concerns me a little bit. I hate calling here, leaving a player behind, but I just have to call against this player. I make the call, and to our delight, the small blind lets it go. Glad that it was just kind of one of those lead into the field, see where I am, and not actually a monster hand. So now we're heads up finally in position, last card incoming, and it's another jack. Big blind checks pretty quick, and I don't really know what I can get called by here that I'm beating, maybe worse kings, but I think in a bet, worse kings for 150, it's entirely possible. I decide in this situation to just check back, take my showdown value, and they show us 9-10 of spades for a missed monster draw. So maybe we could have gone for some value against some other hands, but they weren't going to call anything on this river. We're taking down this monster pot with king-queen offsuit. Let's go. For this hand, we look down at queen-eight of clubs in the big blind, 
And then we look back up to see our buddy in the hijack has raised it up to $20. The cutoff calls and I decide to make the call. Just closing the action, decent price, suited cards. Let's get to it. We're going three ways out of position, 60 in the middle to a board that comes six four deuce rainbow. Gross. Uh, I mean, we've got two overs, a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. I guess we check to the razor, but the action checks through. We get a decent card on the turn that helps us out a little bit. It's the 10 of clubs. We've got a flush draw now and out of position. I think this should be the time to start betting as a bluff. But I decide to just kind of stick with the original plan of if I don't hit something, then kind of just check fold. So I check explaining to fold to a bigger bet, call reasonable sized bets, but action checks our way through again. So we're going to get a final card and that card doesn't help us out at all. It's an offsuit five. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you donkeys would just go for a complete airball bluff trying to buy this pot? Don't lie to me. I know you would. I think about it. We certainly could. I mean, there's been no strength throughout the entire hand. We block 7-8, which is kind of cool. I decided to check just, you know, whatever, check fold. Kind of gave up at this point. And then this happens after it checks all the way through a third time. Oh, queen high. Queen high. Hey, <laughs> Queen eight, queen eight, right? Yeah, yeah. Mix them up how you want. Queen eight. Well, that's different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that. Give me that. Give me that one back. All right, there we go. After some mix and matching, my buddy also shows us queen eight for the same hand, and the cutoff just lets it go. So somehow we're gonna chop up this pot with the uh, queen high and chop up the cutoff's money. You guys are you guys are seeing this like a few weeks after I'm making it, but my birthday was last Thursday. And from what I remember, I think Firehouse Subs does birthday subs. So let's go try to see if we can get a birthday sub and record our last hand maybe in the firehouse. I don't know. Let's try to get something working. Hi, I've heard rumors that you guys do a, like a birthday special thing. Is that true? Um, yes, but it's like for Firehouse Rewards members. Okay, I got that. Here we go, here is our sub at Firehouse. Gonna enjoy this real quick before giving you guys our last hand of note. Just finished up my birthday sub from Firehouse. It was delicious. Just like this last delicious hand we're gonna talk about with the best hand in the game, pocket aces in the cutoff. Now, a lot of you guys say that I probably don't know how to play aces and you're, you're probably right. So there's three limbs to us and we push the pressure $40. The big blind calls and then eventually Eventually, it folds all the way back to the hijack who makes the call. So we're gonna go three ways with 135 in the middle with aces to a board of, well, does it really matter what the board is? Let's see that card flip again. Now, let's see it in slow motion. Now let's see it with some crazy effects. We don't have the budget for that? Big blind checks, the hijack, instead of checking just mucks, which, you know, that reduces my chances of getting paid off even more as they were the action player. And in this spot, I hate just checking back for deception in position because then I just lose a possible street of value. Usually that's better to do when you're out of position. So at least you can check raise if given the opportunity. In this spot, I just want to try to build a pot. I bet small $50 trying to get them to call, but I don't know if they would have called anything on this board because it does favor me and I've got a lot of the big blockers. So they let it go. And here's the real question. It's late into the night. We've shown a lot of winners. We've hit a lot of hands. Would you show this hand? I decide to, because I think it's entertaining just to show, see how crazy good we've been running. Not too long after that, we rack up and we head on out of there. After only about four hours of play, we book ourselves a win of $12.30, which comes out to about $310 an hour or 60 some big blinds per hour. I've got it right here for you. We went out to a lot of places today and that's pretty cool. You know, it's good to actually get out into your community. Can't stay just strapped into tables, strapped in your computer playing poker all day. Remember, get out there, get moving. And also you can do it if you're struggling with something today. 
Just push through, stay strong. Remember, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. This is Runner Runner Poker. Have a good one.